Hi, my name is Mathilde and I am a field application engineer at Kinova. In the previous series of videos, we saw how to impact and install your Gen3 robotic arm and how to configure your wired LAN setting in order to control your robot from the web app. In this video, I will go deeper in the web app description. The goal is to present you all the content you can find in it and all the actions you can do from it. Let's begin with the monitoring page, the control menu and the option bar. First, enter the IP address of your robot and press enter. Then enter your username and password and click connect. The first page you see when you reach the web app is the monitoring page. This page gives you the complete real-time feedback of your robotic arm. In the base section, you can see the current operating mode, control mode and servo mode of your robot. The next section sums up the real-time position, torque and velocity of each actuator. The interconnect of your Gen3 robotic arm is composed of an IMU or Inertial Measurement Unit. The real-time data of the sensor is given in the interconnect section. Finally, in the end effector section, you will find the real-time feedback of your end effector, namely its Cartesian position, translations and orientation, its velocity and the command pose you send. This information can be very useful, so you can download it in a JSON format by clicking on the snapshot data button in the top right of the monitoring page. When you click the button, the JSON file is automatically downloaded. In the Detail tab, you will find more complete current feedback of your end effector, base, each actuator and your interconnect. As for the Overview tab, you can download this information in a JSON format by clicking on the Snapshot Data button. In the bottom of the monitoring page, you will find the control menu. This is where you will control your robot. The first icon, named Pose, allows you to control your robot in Cartesian joystick mode. When you click on the icon, a tab opens and by moving the different joystick buttons, you will control your robot by controlling the translation and the orientation of your end effector. Let's try it. Click on the pause icon of the control menu. When you move the cursor on the left, you will move the end effector in X, Y and Z translation. When you move the cursor on the right, you will control the orientation of your end effector. If you have a gripper, you can control it by moving the finger's cursor. Then, if you click on the arrow situated in the top right of the tab, a larger tab appears. It gives you the possibility to change the linear and the angular speed of your commands. You can also change the orientation of your z-axis. Finally, you can change the reference frame of your command. You can choose between a mixed frame, the tool frame or the base frame. Now, let's take a look to the Angular GST control mode. To do so, let's click on the Angular icon. For this type of control, you can move each joint individually. That's why you have one cursor per joint. In order to move the robot, simply move each cursor to reach the desired position. As for the Cartesian joystick control, if you have a gripper, you can control it by moving the finger's cursor. As for the Cartesian control, if you click in the little arrow in the right of the tab, a larger tab appears. It allows you to modify the speed of your commands for each joint and for the gripper. The next control mode is the admittance mode, so let's click on the admittance icon. 
For this mode, you will be able to control your robot by applying a force by hand on the end effector or on each joint. If you have a seven degrees of freedom robotic arm, as me, three modes are available Cartesian, joint, and new space. If you have a six degrees of freedom robotic arm, only the Cartesian and the joints mode are available. When you click on one of the admittance modes, you will see that the little LEDs on the wrist of your robot become orange. This means that your robot is in admittance mode and is ready to be unguided. Then, if you have a vision module, you can access the real-time video streaming by clicking on the camera icon. When you click on the snapshot icon, three possibilities are available. Pose, Angular, and Tool. If you click on the Pose symbol, you will take a snapshot of the Cartesian pose of your robot. If you choose the Angular symbol, you will take a snapshot of the Angular position of each joint. Without any surprise, when you choose the Tool symbol, you will take a snapshot of your Tool position. Let's try with the Cartesian pose. This position uh, is then saved and you can use it to create an action. Here, your snapshot is saved just here. The last icon is the Actions icon. This is where you can control your robot by sending it a Cartesian, Angular, and Gruber position to wish, or a sequence of different movements. In the Unpack and Install video, I showed you the demo sequence. Here, you can see the snapshot we took earlier. If I choose this command, my robot will move to the position I saved when I took the snapshot. To launch an action, just select one in the list and then click on the play button. If the hold button is activated, you need to hold the play button to complete the action. If your robot is in a safe environment, you can deactivate the hold button and just click on play to launch the action. Let's now focus on the option bar situated in the top right of your screen. The option bar is composed of four icons. The first icon is the notifications icon. This is where you can find the notifications that your robot sends to you in real time. If the notification is important, you can mark it. If you want to see more notifications, for example, which were sent earlier, click on the view all button. If you want to clear all the notifications, just click on the Clear All buttons. The notifications are very important, especially in case of bugs or faults. The next icon is the User icon. When you click on it, you can see which user is connected. You can change the language, sign out, or manage your account by clicking on the Account button. You will be redirected to the User page. I will give you more information about this page in the next video. Then, the next icon is the Robot State icon. When you click on it, you will see the main information about your robotic arm, from the name to the servoing mode, going through the connection information, the active state, the control mode, and the operating mode. When you click on uh, the View All Safeties button, you will be redirected to the Safety tab. I will present this tab to you in the next video. Finally, you'll have the stop button. It corresponds to a software emergency stop. It will stop your robot and put it in fault. If you want to quit the fault state, you need to be sure that your environment is safe and then you need to go to the robot state icon here. You will see that an error was raised. To clear it, click on the clear all button. Then a few seconds later, the robot will be back to a normal state. This is the end of this video. Together we saw what contains the monitoring page, how to control the robot using the control panel, and what information you can have when looking at the option bar. In the next video, I will go through all the tabs of the web application. Stay tuned. Bye-bye.